In a few of my previous episodes, I've spoken quite a lot about the choice of performance metrics for optimizations. And by performance metric, I mean the calculation that's used to measure how well each set of parameters performs so that you can then construct a profile or surface and choose the parameters you want to use in live trading. I've even run a few coding tutorials that have taken you through step by step how to implement some of my preferred metrics into your algos. But one thing I've never done before is undertake a structured piece of quantifiable research to identify which metric is actually best until now. So if you think you'd benefit from seeing the results of that study, then stay tuned. I'm not really sure why I've never undertaken the research that's necessary to quantifiably determine which performance metric works best before now. But now I have done just that. And in this episode and the next, I'm going to present those findings back to you. It will need two episodes simply because of the amount of the results obtained. But before I get into the results, let me provide you with some details regarding the background of this research study and also the scope that I was working to. The primary aim of the research clearly was to help identify which metric or metrics performed the best at doing the job of identifying the most robust parameters in an optimization. Another way of thinking about this is identifying the performance metrics that operate as the best predictors of future performance based on past performance. And although the results were broadly in line with what I was expecting, there were also a few surprises, but more on that later. Another important aspect of the initial study though, was to ascertain the best technique or process to use in order to determine which metrics are the best. And that's not as simple as you might think, but I believe I got there in the end and the learning from this will be extremely valuable in future research studies around this theme. So let me now explain what the scope of the performance metrics was for the research. So it considered eight different performance metrics. The first two of those are the profit factor and what I call the normalized profit factor, which is a metric I've talked about in previous episodes also the expected payoff, the recovery factor, and the Sharpe ratio. It also looks at the coefficient of correlation that I've talked about previously in terms of using that on the resulting equity curves, and also the coefficient of determination, R squared. The reason I've put them together here is because when you use these as your ranking technique, they both give the same result, so they can both be used in the same way. I've also looked at CAGR over maximum drawdown, and this is the version I prefer of the return over max drawdown metric. So it's similar to the recovery factor, just with a few differences in the calculation. And so again, it will be interesting to see how that compares with recovery factor. And then finally, the metric that I've often preferred, the CAGR over mean drawdown, is the final metric in the scope. Now these can be broadly categorized into two areas. Those I'm calling the common or standard metrics. So these are typically in wide use by algo traders as part of their optimization processes. And then I've got the more proprietary metrics. So for example, the normalized profit factor and also the CAGR over mean drawdown. To the best of my knowledge, these are metrics that I devised 
that aren't generally in wide use. There might of course be a few more of you using them now, I've done tutorials on them in the past, but apart from that I'm not aware of any wider use. Now the coefficients of correlation and determination are of course very standard statistical techniques, however their use on an equity curve isn't quite as common. But in this case I am actually aware of other traders who are already using this before I started to use the technique. So just a very high level overview now of the optimization settings that I used. So I used a duration of 10 years. It was a single stage optimization and by that I mean it wasn't a multi-stage walk forward analysis. So at this point I just wanted to keep things very simple and that used a optimization to walk forward ratio of 3 to 1. So this is effectively what it looked like. 7.5 years for the optimization and 2.5 years for the walk forward validation. And in line with my advice from previous tutorials, I kept the optimization to just two variables, one for the open signal and one for the closed signal. So that amounted to nine values for the open and seven for the close, meaning there were 63 parameter combinations in total. Now before we get into the details of the research itself, I just want to make you aware of a couple of caveats. So first of all, at this point, I've only undertaken this research on a single optimization. And the reason for that is because at this stage, I'm just trying to determine what the best process is to do this. Once I've achieved that, I'll then go on and perform this on other optimizations I perform in the future. And in terms of the outcomes of the research, it did indeed help me to define a process or a technique in order to compare performance metrics in a fair way. But also, of course, it did provide an initial idea of how well each of the metrics within scope did actually perform. But as I said, that was only for a single optimization. And so now, in the future, now I've got this process in place, I'll be validating those initial findings on probably every optimization I do from this point forward. And this, of course, will increase the statistical significance of those results. And additionally, I'll be looking to incorporate walk forward analysis into the process as well to see how the performance metrics compare within that kind of framework. Okay, so next I'm going to get into the detail and show you the results that I obtained. But just before I do that, I have a quick request to make. I always review every comment that's made on my videos and a recurring theme of the feedback is that the content of the tutorials is really, really great. And many of you can't believe it's free instead of on a paid for trading program. But equally, people also tend to be quite surprised at how relatively few views the videos have, maybe five or six hundred per video. And you're absolutely right, there seems to be an imbalance between what you're telling me is top rate content with only a relatively few views. So my simple request is for you to please share a link to these videos. It's really easy to do. There's a share button right below. So please either share on social media or alternatively, maybe say a few words on any forums that you use and put a link in the post. It would be really, really great if with your help, we can get the viewing figures much higher. And also let me ask you to take your mind back in time and think about if there've been any of my episodes in the past that have stood out to you as being particularly useful. And then again, if you could go back to those and share them in the same way, that again would be absolutely awesome and so much appreciated. And it's this increase in viewers that will ensure I'm able to continue making great and useful content for you. Okay, so with that said, click top right now to go to the next part where I'll take you through some of the results of the research.